Good morning, everybody. My name is Uche Mechi, and I'm the board chair here at City Sprouts. I'd love to officially welcome you to our 21st annual City Sprouts meeting. It's the one time of the year when we have the City Sprouts board, president pass, advisory council, staff, most dedicated champions all in one place. This morning, you'll get to hear City Sprouts State of the Union. We hope you'll also leave with a clear sense of the organization's direction and feel energized and motivated to help City Sprouts grow in this critical time of stat crises. Now I'd like to introduce Jane Hershey, the founder and executive director of City Sprouts, who will share a few thoughts about how these past couple of years have helped focus City Sprouts mission and vision. Jane. Thank you, Uche, and um, welcome everyone. It's, um, it's great to be at City Sprouts annual meeting again uh, in our 21st year. Um, and I'm really thrilled that you all are here. Um, I, it, as our 21st year, I just uh, need to say that City Sprouts has done remarkable things in 21 years. Um, beyond what we what expectations were for us and and quite frankly um, at the beginning even beyond what we thought we could do um, we've created a space and a time in the school day for thousands of children to learn about the natural world through the garden uh, we've strengthened science education for children by making it hands-on and accessible um, and situating learning in that dynamic environment of a garden um, so I, I know I need to uh, give credit to so many people who are on this call right now for um, this remarkable thing that we've done together. So City Sprouts, I will uh, remind you all, has always been about making learning accessible. And from the beginning, uh, we have considered children who were historically disenfranchised from the traditional classroom young students with special educational needs, English language learners, kinetic learners, uh, the kids who have a hard time sitting in their seat and following what's being written on a board, children growing up in economically distressed neighborhoods. And teachers and parents um, have been telling us from very early on what a difference City Sprouts makes in their children's learning. Um, and it's, I think that's really what's kept us going um, all of this time. Um, we know that it's especially impactful for children who have little access to green space where they live at home and where the school garden is one of the first places where they're putting their hands in, in the dirt and, um, and feeling comfortable doing that and learning about um, uh, worms and other decomposers that live in the soil and plants starting and um, that food comes from the garden. So we saw um, the capacity in science education for social emotional learning. Um, and I will say we saw that with uh, teachers help that pointed out that they were using the garden for social emotional learning their students, even when we were um, thought we were just strictly creating science lessons. So Gil Nome of the Pear Institute and um, now called ISRI at Harvard University told me this year that they have a mantra in the ISRI office. And that is social emotional learning can happen in a lot of contexts, but good science learning can't happen without social emotional learning at the core. So we uh, take that and we know that um, City Sprouts has been doing just that. So the work we've been doing was remarkable. Um, and then the pandemic arrived. And in fact, I'd say actually three pandemics arrived. There's the COVID pandemic. Um, there was the racial reckoning um, that happened um, throughout this country with George Floyd's death. And there's been a heightened sense of climate change, which I'm gonna call a pandemic um, with the news of what has been happening around the world um, in terms of the climate and its impact on, on people's lives and how we live, how humans live on this earth. So like every other educational nonprofit, City Sprouts had to take a deep, hard look at what City Sprouts does, what impact we have and what we could, what we could do. Um, so immediately 
what we did was we pivoted to virtual learning with our schools. And um, I have to hand it to my staff um, a, a year and a half ago for leading the way in immediately putting out videos for their students and their classrooms. And we built on that um, to unbelievably quickly um, make a virtual program that was still garden-based and still inviting children to find plants wherever they could, even if they were just growing in their apartment, or even if they were just looking at trees outside the window. And we were some of the first partners invited back into schools. We were invited back into Cambridge classrooms last fall. Not all students had returned, but our garden educators were invited to come back and teach science hands-on uh, for the students who were there. And then in the spring, in March and April, Boston Public Schools reached out and invited us, encouraged us uh, to come back and teach their students. In, in fact, I'll tell you that one uh, Boston principal uh, told Solomon and me that um, of all, all her community partners peeled away um, or she didn't renew except for City Sprouts. And she said, it was the hands-on learning and it was the science education. And I knew I needed you through the pandemic. So we hear uh, more people talking about science equity now, uh, recognizing that uh, science literacy is important for this next generation, for every, every citizen. It's a, civic, um, it's a civic duty as well as um, uh, learning about science. So my staff and I are looking forward to giving you updates today from the field um, and, and the board um, and staff plans for what's emerged from our deep dive, you know, how we've been thinking about um, what we can do and what we can do differently. And I'm really thrilled and excited to share with you what some of those plans are. Um, but before um, I pass this over to um, our program staff, I am really thrilled to introduce you to Jessica Parsons, uh, City Sprouts uh, first development director. Um, as many of you know, we waited a long time for that development director and I'm really um, delighted that it's Jessica. Jessica joined our staff uh, last March, just in time for Dig It. Um, and many of you have met her. Um, I hope that you all will have a chance to meet her very soon. She comes to City Sprouts with um, a previous career starting as an outdoor educator. So she knows this well, and then as a program director um, and then working in development. So we're really thrilled that Jessica has joined our team and is bringing her expertise to City Sprouts. And Jessica, I'll pass it off to you. Okay, thank you, Jane. Um, so nice to have everybody on this call today. Um, as Jane mentioned, I've spent my career leading outdoor education programs, and I'm especially motivated to increase access to hands-on learning for urban public schools. So I'm so thrilled to be part of the City Sprouts team um, and to support all the great work that we do to promote and teach and create space for garden classrooms to become part of the structural fabric of a school and every child's education. And to me, this work is not only about teaching and learning, it's about facilitating the student's experience to grow an attachment to these learning spaces so that they can claim them as their own spaces um, in their schools. And um, I'm excited to say, and I think you all know that City Sprouts is poised to grow um, after uh, this super challenging year where the staff was able to pivot and continue programming um, we are excited to share some growth goals with you, and we've set an ambitious goal to raise $75,000 uh, by January 31st to kick off our fiscal year fundraising, and we'd like to do this. We can do this together. Um, so you'll hear today about new gardens, about hands-on science education, about leadership development for our middle schoolers, and all of these are areas where we're excited to grow through learning and building community and cultivating the next generation of environmental leaders. Um, so today, as you listen to our board and our staff talk about plans for 2022, we're asking three things of you, our city sets uh, community and supporters. Um, one, that, um, that you champion 
the City Sprouts mission. I, I know so many of you do um, in your networks and your circles. Um, that two, that you become familiar with our 2022 program goals so that you can share them across your networks. And, um, and then three, that you support City Sprouts with a financial gift this year. Um, please think about how you might be able to help us grow our network of supporters this year to reach um, our ambitious financial goal, whether it's through um, invites to our annual fundraiser, Dig It, in April, um, through volunteering in the gardens. Um, we have so many supporters that help us that way, um, or through and or through becoming a donor. So you all are this foundation that sustains our work, and we're so fortunate to have you. And we'll share some more ideas about um, fundraising for that goal at the end of the presentation. So um, right now, I'm really thrilled to introduce Rohan Kundargi, who is a City Sprouts board director and the chair of our program committee. So he's going to help introduce our program goals and direction. Rohan. Thank you, Jessica. Good morning, everyone. My name is Dr. Rohan Kandargi, and I serve on the City Sprouts Board of Directors and also act as the Program Committee Chair. The Program Committee is made up of board members, external advisors, and City Sprouts staff members, and our mission is to brainstorm and advise on the organization's larger programmatic goals. Earlier this year, the committee was tasked to develop a clear direction for City Sprouts growth over the next two years. Shaped by the extraordinary needs laid bare by the pandemic, and also 20 years of experience from City Sprouts working with thousands of elementary school students and hundreds of classrooms, the program committee worked towards developing the goals you see here. The committee solicited the expertise of City Sprouts garden educators and gained valuable feedback from our outside evaluators at Sun Associates and other stakeholders during this process. What emerged from our months of work is a program direction characterized by growth or deepening in three areas and two guiding principles. We are very excited about these directions as they boldly declare where City Sprouts hopes to go while emphasizing our commitment to our local communities. In just a moment, I'm gonna turn it over to our members, to three members of the City Sprouts team who will expand on these three program goals. But as you hear more about these goals, please feel free to put any questions in the chat or use the Q&A function, Q&A button below. We will have a short Q&A session at the end of these descriptions. Now, I would like to hand it over to City Sprouts Program Director, Solomon. Sorry about that, folks. Good morning. My name is Solomon Montano. I'm the program director here at City Sprouts, and I oversee all of City Sprouts programming in our in-school science program, as well as our out-of-school time young leaders program uh, for middle schoolers. From the start, City Sprouts has been about addressing science equity by making science education relevant and accessible to children who have historically been shut out from our traditional methods of teaching and left behind in our communities, especially when it comes to science opportunities. City Sprouts began 20 years ago with hands-on learning in the garden built into the school day. In 2000, Jane was the first garden educator, leading hands-on activities with seeds, potting soil, and fresh fruits and vegetables in seven Cambridge classrooms. We received our first service contract with Cambridge Public Schools in 2004 through the Science Department. While teachers use City Sprouts fluidly to cover lots of subjects, science has always been at the core of how students experience their time in the City Sprouts garden. Parents and teachers let us know about the impact garden-based learning had on their students and their children, and particularly on students who are historically marginalized from traditional learning and those who have little access to green spaces where they live. The accumulation of this feedback over many years led us to reset four years ago when we began developing a curriculum that would work in tandem with the district science units. Working closely with our district partners, the goal was to enhance and enrich science uh, and make it accessible to every student. We call it early start in science. It's new and in some ways it's kind of what we've always been doing. For the past two years, we've had an outside evaluator, Sun Associates, evaluating outcomes for our curriculum. 
Um, they are collecting data through teacher surveys, garden educator feedback, and class observations, both remote and in person. Early start in science continued through the pandemic virtually in, 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 in uninterrupted, sorry. Uh, our garden educators did a wonderful job going to schools uh, when possible and teaching out in the garden, practically the safest uh, space available during the height of the pandemic, as well as making videos for our school teachers and our partners to make sure that the kids who are learning at home still were, had access to valuable science lessons. Early start in science has costs above and beyond City Sprouts operating expenses. Our garden educators time learning and leading these new lessons in school gardens and classrooms. An educational consultant, Jeff Winokur, who's key to the quality of the effort to really make our curriculum rich and expansive. And Sun Associates, an outside evaluator capturing early start in science outcomes. Our vision is consistent, high quality, science model based on next generation science standards and practices and the core ideas. Personally, I think this work is important because it gives our kids a chance to have a greater connection to outdoor spaces and green spaces when they normally wouldn't have. And it also gives our kids, our students, a chance to really have themselves feel like scientists, something that many of us didn't feel when we were growing up. Um, I think if you ask a lot of us here on this call if they felt like a scientist in third, first grade, second grade, fifth grade, they probably, probably tell you not. But the kids we work with today, when we speak to them, they say they are scientists. So we see the impact every day working with our youth and working with Boston and Cambridge Public Schools. Um, so I think it's very important that we continue this work and continue to be uh, good partners to our communities and our school. So I'm gonna hand it off to our operations uh, manager, Tricia, to tell us a little bit more about one of our very important goals. So my name is Tricia Josephson, and I am City Spouse's Operations Manager. I'm going to speak to the uh, 12 plus 12 goal, uh, which we have, uh, which is to expand the three additional Boston Public School partnerships. The, the goal is to reach more elementary children with our in-school early start in science program. Because our model is embedded in the school day, which often part of science time, more schools means more students who will experience city sprouts. We currently have nine elementary school partners in Boston and 12 elementary school partners in Cambridge. We are proposing in this grant to change that imbalance. That is why we refer to it as the 12 plus 12. It will result in city sprouts serving an equivalent number of schools in both school districts. My job is to oversee uh, building new school gardens and also caring for the school gardens we already have. We build a new school garden with a Boston partnership that began this year at the Nathan Hale School in Roxbury. We organized a summer crew of volunteers to care for our school gardens over the summer. We had about uh, 60 volunteers who completed a total of 197 hours of volunteer work. Our goal is to raise funds this year to start three new school partnerships in September next year. That includes identifying the, school, the right school partners, building new school gardens, or expanding existing gardens a school may already have, building school relationships and orienting teachers to the program, and hiring new City Sprout staff. Thank you, so I'm handing it over to Carl. Good morning, everyone, and thanks, Teresia. My name is Carl Cook. I'm a senior garden educator uh, at City Sprouts, and I am working at three of our school partners, as well as leading one of our uh, after school uh, middle school clubs. And I'm here to share some updates on our Young Leaders Program. Our Young Leaders Program is the middle school branch of our programming um, that takes the form of a uh, five week summer program and then three after-school clubs that take place in East Cambridge, Roxbury, and Dorchester. Um, the Young Leaders Program began in 2007 um, as the summer program. We've now added, um, or long ago added, our school year club component. Um, and now to this day, over a thousand youth have 
uh, come out of uh, the City Sprouts Young Leaders Program. Um, going in, into uh, this past year and a half, uh, a lot has changed and we wanted to reinvigorate our Young Leaders Program around two specific goals. Um, the first of which is we wanted to um, more intentionally focus our programming on uh, youth from uh, historically marginalized and economically disadvantaged uh, communities. Um, like I said, specifically those three in East Cambridge, Roxbury, and Dorchester. And so what that looked like is we updated our application process um, to make sure that those, um, those um, factors were included and uh, enshrined properly. Um, because we were always drawing youth that you know more or less fit those categories, but we want we felt it was important to make that step to officially build it into our application process. Uh, we also um, now have our, a system in place where we are connecting with families early on in the spring to really build up that family relationship, um, because that ties into our second new goal for the Young Leaders Program. Uh, which has been to um, restructure it into a multi-year experience that carries youth through their middle school years from sixth, seventh, eighth, and then into high school. Uh, so that what that means is um, rethinking our curriculum, our set list of activities, so that it's not just running back the same hits year after year, but um, can really uh, allow youth to build those leadership skills, those social emotional skills that Jane was talking about at the beginning of this. Um, and where I see that, uh, where that's been happening over the past year was just two weeks ago when we started up our school year um, after school club and my youth opened up to me and were, were venting after the, the past year where they feel that their seventh or sixth grades were just taken from them, that they, they breezed by with a year of remote learning, lack of in-person programming in a safe environment. And that is, that's where um, our after-school programs, our youth leadership team, uh, I hope can continue building that, those like personal connections, a sense of ownership, a place where youth feel that they are in charge and they're not just going through, uh, now that school's back in person, just going through the motions um, and that they can really uh, grow up to be compassionate and critical thinkers that uh, care about our environment, um, know a thing or two about growing and making food, um, hang on to some of those life skills and, and be leaders for tomorrow. So now I will be passing it to Rohan to open it up for questions. Thank you, everybody. And just as a little reminder, if you have, if you're listening in right now and you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the chat or use the Q and A button below, or raise your hand. Um, we have our amazing City Sprouts team right here. So I have a question to lead off, and hopefully others can add into their other questions. It's more of uh, as a question about the twelve and twelve program. Are there any specific criteria or ideas around selecting the three additional schools to make it 12 in BPS and 12 in CPS? And I'll leave that open to anyone on this panel. Yeah, I can I can start um, uh, with an answer and then I'll pass it on to others because that's a big that's a big question, Rohan. <laughs> um, you know, our our partners at Boston Public Schools um, have asked us to. Um, go through the district as we look for new partners. One of the challenges that Boston Public Schools have faced um, over the last, um, I would say, several decades um, has been that um, partnerships are not distributed um, equitably across the uh, Boston schools. Um, and some schools have a lot of partners. They have the capacity to do outreach, um, but that's not necessarily where the partnership is needed. So we're not going to be putting out a classic RFP or request for proposals from schools or an application, but really start with um, the district helping us identify what some of those schools are. Um, and um, Solomon, I, I'm gonna pass it to you to talk a little bit more about what we think a good partner um, would have or what 
yeah, what we're looking for and what we think they're, they might be looking for. Thanks, Jane. I'll just connect it back to our goals. Uh, one of the goals that Carl mentioned, just trying to focus in on areas of Boston that are traditionally marginalized and historically underfunded in terms of uh, schools and partnerships. So that would also be Dorchester and the Roxbury areas. I think from the City Sprout side, what we're looking for in schools is someone who is willing to partner with City Sprouts long term. Um, so we really want a school who wants us to be there for three, four, five years rather than just one year and then done. Uh, when City Sprouts comes into a school, one of our biggest efforts is making partnerships with teachers and getting them comfortable with the garden educator, making sure they understand how City Sprouts operates in the school. And we can't do that in just one year. Um, the impact of those partnerships expands and gets greater as the years go on. So the longer that we are partnered with the school, the better. Um, we're also looking with school, looking to partner with schools who really care deeply about science and who value uh, green and outdoor spaces. Um, when we go into a school, we want to make sure that we're as integrated as possible. So that also means um, getting that relationship with the admin and school officials. So that way um, we are partnering from the ground up with the teachers and from the top down with that. So those are just a few of the things that we look for when we are deciding who we partner with. Thank you, Jane and Solomon. Um, we have a question from Henry, Henry Vandermark. Um, Henry's question is, when you say young leaders, can you say something about their leadership? Do they teach younger kids or do they leave with a message for outside leadership in the city's Sprouts mission? Yeah, I'm happy to field this one. Um, th and thank you, uh, that's a good question because we I feel like leadership is often used so frequently in um, programming and it's like, all right, what does that, what does that really mean? Uh, we have focused what we talk about our, our leadership development around four C's, uh, which are critical thinking, collaboration, uh, creativity, and uh, oh, what's uh, communication. <laughs> there it is. Um, so those four C's, um, I like boiling them down to how I, I work on that in my, my club is um, working with, you know, we're getting middle schoolers where they are coming out of the upper elementary years and um, really becoming more aware of the larger world around them. So I see that um, trying to get youth to um, work on, working on their um, emotional intelligence, uh, working on um, understanding uh, interdisciplinary um, subjects and issues and uh, then communicating that. So whether it is public speaking or creative projects um, however mode of communication that takes. Great, thank you, Carl. And I think we have time for maybe one more question. And I have a follow-up about YLP specifically. Um, so I mentioned one of the more recent focuses was on this multi-year format. Um, could someone, either Carl or Solomon or Jane, speak a little bit about what the importance of a multi-year program for students, especially in the middle school years? Sure, I can, I can talk about that. Carl mentioned the four C's, and I think you, it, for anyone, you don't just learn those over one year. Um, we're meeting with our kids once a week on Wednesdays, and so we really only have a handful of sessions with them over the course of the year. So uh, we really want to think about how our program could follow middle schoolers through their middle school years. So that means our uh, youth leadership team, which operates during the school year, and then transition that into our summer program. And how can we make that an enriching experience that builds on their previous year, allows new youth to join, uh, if, whether they're in sixth, seventh, or eighth grade, but then also gives those youth who are veterans a chance to build on what they've been already been doing. So we're working really hard to develop a engaging and rich curriculum that allows for newcomers, but also is challenging for folks who have already gone through our program once. Um, and that might look like some of our youth becoming teen leaders um, to the newcomers, or it might look like some of our uh, experienced youth leading different activities and games in the program to act as mentors and models for those kids who are younger than them. So we're really thinking about the leadership being integrated over the course of these three years, 
and then really giving the youth an opportunity to lead and speak themselves, to give them some voice about what they're doing in the program, as well as just having really fun and engaging science activities. And um, I just want to add to build on uh, both what Carl and Solomon said, you know, in addition to the curriculum, that three year goal is also about relationship building. Um, so we know, uh, Carl already brought it up, you know, having a relationship with, uh, with young people and a really vulnerable time in your life, speaking as a parent um, of, you know, watching two uh, now young women who went through their middle school years. For every child, it's a vulnerable time. Um, and to have a relationship with um, a caring adult, um, Carl or Heather and Sydney um, and our clubs, um, who's both helping them learn things, all that great curriculum that Solomon's talking about, but also is getting to know them and support them in their peer community. I would just add that that's another um, really strong motivator for us in moving to a three-year uh, curriculum and a three-year relationship with kids. Great. Thank you so much for all of your questions from the audience. And thank you to our panelists for those very helpful answers. And next, I would like to turn it over to Jessica for the next part of this program. I had to unmute myself there. All right. Thank you, everyone, um, for all of your insight. And so now we have the opportunity to think about how we grow together. Um, and with the launch of this new fiscal year, the amazing goals that you've already heard about from Rohan and Sea Sprout staff, um, we're gonna invite you to our new fundraising campaign so that you can support us with a gift this fall. I mentioned before, we have an ambitious goal of $75,000 by January 31st. And so, um, and, and you all are a community of, of, of supporters that's really dedicated to our mission. Some of you give monthly and some of you annually and every gift, no matter what size it is, contributes to this impact that we're looking for, especially as we grow in Boston and, and we um, enrich our programs and we build the City Spouts community. Um, so we, are hoping that you'll participate. And we have a new tool, a new fundraising tool we wanted to show you here really quickly um, that allows you to actually share Sea Sprouts and the mission with your friends and your family and your network. Um, some of you may have already participated in peer-to-peer -peer fundraising before through platforms like GoFundMe is similar or Give Lively. They um, can have a multiplier effect when they're shared across email or social media. Um, and your friends and family can, can share your link to the campaign too. So if you choose, and of course this is an option, if you choose to try out peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, we have a great platform through One Cause, and you can create your own page and add a personal note of why you support CD Sprouts. I know personally for me, um, I, am, I, I sit on another board, and so I just participated with a board funding fundraising campaign um, for that organization that I love. And um, it's amazing how quickly the word can spread, um, even just by sending an email or putting it on social media. Um, so the more traditional options, of course, are uh, for supporting this campaign are most welcome. Um, you can make a direct, a direct gift on our website and send a check through the mail. But if you want to try this peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, I'll be sending more information this week. And what you see on your screen is um, a personal page that Erica, our development and communications associate, thank you, Erica, um, sort of mocked up for you. So you kind of see um, that you can put your own personal message. You can track your progress with the tree. Um, and it's a, um, it's an opportunity for you to, to be able to share with your network. Um, so we just want to say again, thank you so much for joining us. Um, we have one more thing that we want to share with you, which is really special. It's a video from Kim Lowe, one of our best supporters, um, who created this video to inspire you to help us grow.
All right. I don't know if you can see me, but so that is it for today. I hope you're motivated and perhaps inspired by what you just saw that video that I was amazing. Um, and I hope you learned perhaps at least one new thing about the amazing work and necessary work we're doing here at City Sprouts in the greater Boston and Cambridge area. I would also like to remind you and invite you to our annual Dig It fundraiser, April 7th, 2022. Put that on your calendar. Jessica will be coming after you if you don't. So more info is forthcoming. Um, and then also, if you just have want to find out more about what we're doing, visit us at citysprouts.org or send an email to info at citysprouts.org. And that's it. Stay safe and stay in touch. And thank you to everybody who joined us today. Thank you.